Well, I've just completed that rather nice scene over in Montpellier in France. Now let's go a bit further north of England, up to the uh, Scotland, and uh, this rather lovely harbour scene there, but a much different day, much different lighting, more of a grey, silvery light of uh, mid-morning there, and we want to try and capture that this time for fun. Not going to use any masking fluid at all this time, just going to paint it in bit by bit. And I'm going to start by doing a wash with the large mop, straight across the whole thing. I'm going to mix up some yellow ochre first of all, a fair amount of it, fairly strong, because it always goes lighter when we paint it on later. So we'll put a, a wash of this down here. All the way through I want a nice Scottish, now a Scottish uh, light that's happening right down. In fact I'm going to paint mine put an entire paper with this. So nice plenty of water. Isn't that word nice don't I? It's a bit, uh, bit off. All the way down through there. Plenty of water, nice and wet. Not doing any dry brush work as yet. Get that bit of hair off there, don't want that to stay on there. A bit of hair come off my brush, it's better. And we're going to bring that warmth down through here. Right off through here, down there. And then I'm going to start to bring in some very light blue, so I'm going to use some of that uh, lovely turquoise in just a moment. So I've got my washes right the way through there, I'm going to paint over those in just a moment. And they come right down into here, bring some clean water right through. So we've got all this lovely wet paper to work into, wet into wet, Scottish mist. Now let's take a little bit of my that lovely turquoise. Greeny blue turquoise. And just start to work some of that into here as my wash. right the way through and down softly at the moment. I'm going to bring glazes over this later. What I want at the moment is this soft wash. And I want that coming up into the sky as well. A little bit warm in my blues now. I'm going to bring a little bit more warmth of that blue up into there. Let it come down wet into wet here. Just blobbing it in gently. Lovely and light, all the way down to these buildings. We've got a little bit of Bertsy in her to it in a moment. It's a little bit warmer, but it's just to keep our blue greens coming there at the moment. There we are. Just let that soft effect of the distance work into there. Back into there again now, that sky is alright, but I want a little bit more warmth into it now. Completely different light to the painting that we did earlier. Taking that same warm with the blue and bringing some of that now into the background here. Still using colour. We could use very limited palettes, but um, I want a bit more colour with this painting. Lovely soft effects we can get this way. Now the building a bit darker against the sky. There we are. Now we'll let that just dry down a bit because that's our initial coats before we start to build up glazes across that. But whilst that's drying I'm going to come back into here just pick up on some of these lovely colours that we've just been doing a little bit with the wet into wet brown in places. I'm going to add a little bit now of, of burnt sienna to it and um, start to look at some of these bits here. 
the background on these trees is a bit darker and greener so the burnt sienna coming to there is going to help to give those trees that bit of extra depth. So I'm just letting it dry gradually as I go along with this. So I'm to bring these out gently at the moment, just gradually drag them through gently here. You can see how we're getting the effect now of the light shining across the water. Just gently tickle this in, getting some of the reflections coming down now that just blend out through here. This is a not paper we're using, not a rough, but even so we're still getting some nice textures on there. Okay, I want to come down with these glazes to the foreground just a little bit more. I was going to use a hake in this later on, but at the moment I'm happy enough with this mop doing nearly everything for me. I want to come with the cools a bit more into this in a minute. We're being a little bit cooler this. We're doing some more work with this soon. Back in the background. This is just to get my soft lovely effects of light so I'm after at the moment. That gives us that lovely effect of light very very quickly. I want to build my glazes over this one. This this was all washes then. Now I can also at this stage, while it's still damp, start to lift things out if I want some more lights. So if I want things to be a bit lighter somewhere now I can start to lift out these colours with a, a drier brush like this. Very effective. Give myself those lighter areas coming through here. I'm going to put some darker ones back again later, but at the moment I just want to pick out these bits of light coming into the dark here. so it doesn't really matter about that bit there. And we'll let that dry off before we start working glazes over it. Oh, well, good morning to you. It's had time to dry off properly now. And in the last painting, we did it really um, a la primer. It was virtually straight onto the paper. We were painting very loosely. We did very few washes. But in this case, we've done our washes, and now we're going to go on with glazing over the top. And we can work some wet into wet onto that as well as we go along. So we need to work up these wet onto dry areas which will give us slightly harder edges. So we want to start fairly softly in the background. I'm going to start with um, the remainder of some of the warm grey I had from yesterday. And you see if I put this over the top here, um, it gives me a sharp edge now, rather than the softer distant one that we had before. We can just bring out these buildings with a little more detail, still keeping them impressionist. So this is a glaze rather than a wash. We've done our washes and now we're putting some, some glazes in. I'll leave some little windows and things in behind me through here. So we'll gradually work our way back and uh, building it up. Little bits of dots and dashes and impressions of of light, feelings of light here. And I'm going to gradually work my way down through this. So we're painting in the darks, leaving the lights behind. Good old watercolour technique. We have to paint our lights first and our darks at the end with watercolour, remember. Unless we're putting an opaque paint over the top, of course, and it's kept a bit different then. We can gradually draw out our picture now in more detail as I put these colours on because I'm actually drawing with the darks, leaving the lights behind. Depends how much detail you want. In this one I'm going fairly detailed just for fun because it is so different to the previous one. 
So I'd like you to look back at that previous one a bit later and compare these two and you'll just see how very different they are. The different ways that we can approach watercolour. You can build up and build up these stronger colours as they come from the lighter in the background to stronger and warmer and more detailed in the foreground. I know many of you do like to paint as photorealists. Um, it's not my scene normally but <clears throat> you know, I can paint any style I wish to paint when I want to paint it, that's the point. You see how this now starts to bring out the <coughs> what are the colours. I want to be a little bit uh, bluer just there. I want to link in some, some blue here into that dark. Right up and through. There's actually some green down there in a moment as well. So I'm going to bring that blue just softly up through there. Again, I'm going to go back to that lovely dark colour I had just now and bring that down and through. If I can drag my brush out sideways a bit in a moment here, and start to bring out these, because it's only a, a not paper, not a rough. <coughs> so I'm going to start bringing out these um, effects of the shadows shimmering across the water here a little bit. Again, we're using it as a glaze. Ring there, a life, life ring, which is rather nice. And we want to start getting in some of these boats as well. Let's start on this one. more colour going on in the background here. We'll just put some glazes of warmth happening in some of these buildings now, I think. A totally different watercolour to the last one. And it's only personal preference is what you really prefer in the end. I want to work here with my mop again soon. You can't really use a small brush for this kind of work, not really. I, I need to come back in and get wet into wet and some more textural work going there. But I did just want to build up some of these backgrounds just to give you the the way that we can work up these lights into darks. Is it we've painted the darks around now and we've brought out these lighter colours. I'm going to leave that for the moment. A few more little bits of colour here and there and I'm going to come back now and start using my bigger brush. Right, so my big brush again. My oval mop. Could use a hake for this but I want to use this just to start flicking up these colours at first. And and to start working in this purple, grey, lovely purple, grey, um, blues here. Down around and through into here with the vertical reflections as well of the buildings. So I can bring some of those in with this brush again. So I haven't finished yet, we can still put glazes on wherever we want. Not easy for me reaching here because I've got to go around the camera to get to it to show you. Lift out as well, remember we were lifting out the other day when we decided to come into this and take out some of these lighter areas as they came through here. Tip of the brush, that's how versatile these mops are, we can use them heavily or we can dry brush or we can use them like that, flat dry brush or we can bring them across to make the effects ripples. So gradually and delicately building it up. Now to come to these warmer colours which are going to make a lot of difference here. This uh, lovely Scottish bladder rack seaweed that we get going on up there. And using slightly Heavier paint now, of course, as well. And lovely rich colours. The darks against the lights now to start bringing out these 
lights we made earlier. So many lovely colours going on, glazes going on down here to work up. And it gives you a very really delicate watercolour, doesn't it? So we're almost ready to work on with the bit more detail now. A bit more warmth going on in the foreground here yet. And these um, looks that's done. We'll break at the edge like this. And we'll look at these very dark purple blues that are happening here. And we'll start to just dip in some of these lovely textures to get the feeling of the little bits of shells. And look how lovely that brings up that texture. And now it it's the rough against the smooth and the light against the dark. We'll do the same thing. Just get it going at the edge there and bring some of those oranges in as well to it. And you can see how we can build things up then using glazes. I can come back into this now and go even more texture if I want to, but let me just go a little bit darker in places. Yes, I just want to get a bit more texturing into these very darks here. Really bring this forward a bit. You can just start to pick out and tidy up a few things now because we've got to the state now where I'm up towards the end of this painting as far as I can go without without making it too dead because I say it becomes too illustrative otherwise and it's not what I'm after at all. And we can be as detailed as you want to work from fairly loosely to tighter again although I've actually started more tight than I've done with almost any painting I've ever shown you <coughs> in this particular one. So you may or may not like this but I've given you a choice, that's the point. I've given you different ways of working and you can decide which is the one for you. The more detailed or the more loose. So I could paint this in a completely different way. Okay, um, I think what I'm going to do, because it's, it's, it is, it's, it's meant to be a very dull day anyway, what I'm going to do is just come back with a few little bits of white just to sparkle up things here and there. Don't to overdo it, but um, just playing around, enjoying, just tidying up a few loose ends here and there. There we go. I think we'll. I'm not all that happy with that one, but I think we'll leave it at that. Some you win, some you lose. It's just a different way of working. Just a few colours at the end can just make a difference. A bit more warmth into this foreground. I'm not going to fiddle too much if I carry on doing it. I must stop, or I will be in danger of doing that fiddling and you know fresh watercolour should be left alone. Maybe I shall use a little colour just to take back a bit in distance again a bit more. We could soften these into a slightly pinker 